Hello, good evening. Welcome everybody to Wednesday Night Live. I am Tanya Krauss from Tanya Krauss Horsemanship and tonight I am joining you for our Wednesday Night Live session. I do apologize for being a little bit late. I am in uh, the very start of a 14-day uh, cult start. We just started on Monday and I have had to travel home in order to get in front of the camera and um, get ready for Wednesday Night Live. So I am cutting it really fine and I just uh, I just arrived home, walked in the front door and, uh, and pressed go on the camera. So uh, tonight I'm really looking forward to uh, our topic which is preparing the horse for the trail or the trail um, how do we know if our horse is ready to go out on the trail and um, how do we prepare him for it so this is a topic that I get asked about quite um, often a lot of people obviously want to go out they want to go trail riding and things like that so it's a pretty hot topic and I'm really looking forward to covering it tonight and what I'm going to do is break it into a few different sections because um, we're you know we're going to talk about how to assess whether he's ready how to prepare him and then um, the first time we're actually going out on the trail so uh, there are our topics tonight I can see everyone starting to roll in thank you so much and welcome and Leah that would be one hour and 18 minutes so uh, hopefully everyone can hear me all right and all that sort of stuff I'm sorry I've got a um, hi Leanne thanks for joining um, I do have a very excited kitten that's very um, happy to see me she's been alone uh, here she is it's Winnie for all of you following the Winnie story um, she's more than um, she's more than cured now as you can see uh, so uh, and I know a lot of you commented to me privately last week about her sort of you know you could see her little head jumping up and down and things like that so uh, she is on my lap and and uh, trying to play because she's been locked up in the house all day without me so because um, we've got the cult start running so welcome everybody thank you so much for joining uh, so, uh, is the horse ready for the trail is the first section of this um, Wednesday Night Live that we're going to be covering. And uh, there's a few questions to ask ourselves in regards to is our horse ready for the trail. Um, and the first question seems pretty logical, but it's one that I um, I feel like I really need to cover because it's, it's something that comes up a lot. Uh, the first question I'm going to ask myself um, and typically when we're asking ourselves about going out on the trail, quite often it's a green horse or a young horse or a new horse or something like that. Hey mama, thanks for joining. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Uh, so the first question that I'm going to ask everybody when you're talking about taking your horse out on the trail is about the stop. And uh, that seems like a fairly logical question, uh, but unfortunately I have heard quite a few um, horror stories about being out on the trail and, uh, and not having the stop in there. And as I said, a lot of people asking me because, you know, we're talking about green horses and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to ask myself is, do I have a stop in there that I really feel like I can use in a situation that is a strange situation? It's not just walking around my arena and asking my horse to stop or trotting around my arena and asking my horse to stop. It's, um, you know, it, do I know 100% of the time when I ask my horse to stop that he is going to stop? That's the first question that I ask myself when I ask myself, is the horse ready to go on the trail? The second thing that I ask myself is about my steering. So, uh, you know, again, a really logical thing, but it's one of those things that we don't, you know, I, I know a lot of people that have gone out on trails with green horses and they might think, oh, you know, I'm just going to take a buddy horse and he's just going to follow him. And so he's going to go wherever he goes. And that's not always the case. So uh, what I need to ask myself is, do I have steering to the extent of being happy about steering my horse out on the trail, knowing that it's not in an enclosed area, it's not going to be like steering him in my arena. You know, if I'm walking down my arena and I'm asking my horse to stop uh, or steer or turn left or turn right or whatever it is, and he is not responsive to the rain, um, or it takes him a few strides to be responsive to the rain, that is probably a situation that I don't want to find myself in when I'm out on the trail. And it could really mean the difference between, you know, not going down a gully that I don't want to go to, um, 
you know, making sure my horse is going to stop if there's a, a, a canyon or a crevice or something that he's worried about. So number one is stopping and number two is steering. Uh, number three is a little bit of an assessment of our horse and his ability to assess situations. And I guess um, I guess when I'm talking about assessing situations, what I'm talking about is my horse's ability to um, remain calm or at least remain present, remain um, remain in a state of mind that I can actually communicate with him in. Um, you know, we see a lot of horses and there's a, there's a grand scale. There's a really big scale when it comes to trail riding or uh, there's a really big scale when it comes to our horses seeing something that they don't like. And you've got everything from a horse that will freeze all the way to a horse that will um, take flight and run. So what I need to ask myself before I go on the trail is, if I'm in a situation on the trail and my horse comes across something that he doesn't like um, or he doesn't know or he's confronted by, what is his? What is my experience with that horse assessing situations and and deferring to me in situations? So you know, if if I'm in the arena and I put out a um you know a big blow up flamingo, uh, like a big pool thing from um, Kmart, we use them on obstacle trails sometimes. If I put one of those in the arena, is my horse completely checked out and saying to me? no way, I'm not listening to you, I need to get as far away from that flamingo as I possibly can? Or is my horse worried but saying to me, okay, I'm worried but I'm going to listen to what you say? Or is my horse, you know, completely calm and confident and saying to me, you know what, I'm okay, you know, I can cope with this situation. So my horse's ability to assess situations and stay connected to me and stay looking to me for um, answers, I guess, looking to me for direction, that would be a major factor in determining whether my horse was ready to go out on the trail. Because as much as we can, and I'll talk about it later in regards to setting up the first trail as a successful um, exercise, as much as we um, want to try and set up the trail as a successful e exercise as much as we possibly can, if we're going into a public area, there's really nothing we can do about um, setting it up to be absolutely perfect for our horses if we're going public. So, you know, um, and we're going to talk about it later, but, you know, we recently went to the beach and we had, you know, there were kites. There happened to be, there happened to be the council was working on the beach, so there were semi-trailers coming in and off the beach. There was a massive excavator working on the beach, all things that we could not have projected if we had even tried to. So these are the kind of things that we need to think to in our mind. If my horse came across an excavator and he was worried about that excavator, would he defer to me and say, you know what, I'm not really happy about this excavator, but I'm going to defer to you and I'm going to listen to you and at least be controllable to the extent that I will allow you to help me through the situation? Or is my horse in the habit of checking out and saying, you know what, there's an excavator, I'm gone. And for those of you sitting at home going, well, I don't know how my horse would behave um, in regards to an excavator because I've never seen one before. What I'm saying is what we need to do is have enough experiences under our belt where we can defer to that, where we can make a reasonable assessment, I guess, about um, how our horses are going to react to something that we don't know. So, um, you know, the more exposure training that we can do with our horses, the better off we are before we take them in a public place and expect them to go on a trail and deal with, you know, potentially motorbikes or potentially, um, you know, uh, push bikes excavators, logging trucks, you name it. There can be a lot of stuff um, on our trails in Australia and I'm sure around the world for those of you watching. Uh, you know, I know in the States when we went riding through the red gums, it was kind of like keep an eye out for mountain lions, you know. So there's always something that you need to be aware of um, and there's always uh, there always needs to be an assessment, I guess, of my horse's um, personality or previous experiences that will indicate to me you know what, I, I'm pretty confident my horse or I'm very confident that my horse will defer to me in a panic situation and he will allow me to handle it and move on. If you're not confident in saying that, then you need to do more things at home. Um, 
and more things in safe controlled environments so say at public arenas or public showgrounds that are more enclosed which will indicate to you um you know what you think your horse will do or or which will give you a pretty good idea of what your horse will do if he is in a situation that he doesn't understand uh, so number four is having an emergency stop on board. So um, knowing that I've got a one rein stop uh, is absolutely imperative before I go out on the trail because uh, you may need to use it in reference to the things that we just spoke about. So, you know, my number my my number three assessment is my horse's ability to assess a situation and stay with me. And then my number four is me knowing that, you know what, if, if I do the exposure training and I do everything I can and I head out on that trail and I'm really confident, you know, my horse is really good and if we see something that's surprising out on the trail, I'm very confident that my horse will defer to me. If I've got that mindset, then my, my backup plan, my plan B is you know what, if that doesn't work, I've got a one rein stop. So at least I'm going to be able to bring my horse to a stop or an emergency stop. You don't have to use a one rein stop. That's what I personally recommend. Um, but if you've got a different kind of an emergency stop, then go for it. But what I need to know is that 1000%, I'm going to have some way to bring my horse to a stop so I can dismount, so I can handle the situation and I can keep myself safe and I can keep the horse safe. So number four is knowing that I've got an emergency stop if all the other effort that I've put in doesn't work. Number five is, is my ability to say to my, myself that my horse has a good level head. And what I mean by that is, you know, you might have a horse that has done exposure training and, you know, does defer to you in regards to situations that they're worried about, um, but... If you went if you went and set up 20 obstacles in your arena or 10 obstacles in your arena and you thought to yourself I know that my horse is going to defer to me about these obstacles but I also know my horse is going to be crazy about these obstacles or they're going to be really spooked about these obstacles or I know they're going to be really worried about these obstacles then your horse isn't ready to go out even if your horse even if you're confident that your horse is going to defer to you and say I'm really worried but I'm I need your help in this situation if you know that your horse is worried about everything but you've got a really good um, set of trust I still wouldn't be taking that horse out on the trail because there's every chance that you're going to reach the point of that horse where the horse is not going to defer to you because they're going to get really pushed out of their comfort zone. And so um, I want to know that I've got a horse with a good level head on him. And I want to know that if I set up 20 obstacles in my arena and, you know, I want to think to myself, I'm pretty sure my horse is going to be confident with 15 of these or 16 of these or 17 with these if you're thinking to yourself oh if i put 20 scary obstacles in my arena and my horse is going to spook at all 20 of them he's not ready to go out he's not ready to go out on a trail that would be my assessment so i want to have a horse that's got a reasonable level head a reasonable um set of experience under his belt where he has been exposed to things and um i know that it's unlikely for him to react rather than it's likely for him to react so um that's that's something that i need to do to keep me and him safe uh so that's the questions that i ask myself when i'm trying to determine whether he is ready to go out on the trail um and then what i want to start talking about you know with myself and with any friends that are going to come out with me is the steps that I can do to prepare my horse to go out on the trail. So those five things were a series of questions that I ask myself to sort of determine whether I think he's ready or whether he needs a bit more work or 
you know, yep, he's, he's going to be awesome out on the trail. And now I need to say to myself, well, what do I need to do to prepare my horse to go out on the trail? So when I do finally take him out on the trail or in public, that he's going to be 100% ready for that or as ready for that as I can possibly make him. There's never ever any 100% guarantees when it comes to um, preparing our horse, but we can set our horses up for the most optimum success that we possibly can. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about in regards to preparation is something that I asked in the questions, which is, do I have an emergency stop? So um, building an emergency stop in my horse, I need to determine what sort of an emergency stop I'm going to use. So I personally use a one rein stop and I want to know that um, my horse is going to respond to that one rein stop whenever I apply it and whenever I ask him to do it. Uh, I, I need to know that the horse is going to respond to the one rein stop even when he's in a stressful situation because that's when I'm going to apply it um, when he's in a stressful situation, typically out on the trail, you know, maybe a motorbike will come along or something like that. So when I'm preparing my horse to go out on the trail, you know, let's say you're watching this right now and you're thinking to yourself, oh yeah, my horse does a one rein stop. I've done thousands and thousands of repetitions. I know that it's in there. What we want to start doing is, is um, testing that one rein stop in the safest environment that we possibly can. So I want to go ahead and, and pop my horse up into the canter in my arena. I want to lope him out in the arena and I want to um, take that one rein and bend him. And I want to feel really confident that he's going to respond to that one rein stop from the canter. And then I might go ahead and start to apply that one rein stop. Um, you know, maybe I might get a friend to come out and, um, you know, wave a flag in the air or do some kind of stimulus that is going to, um, that is going to take my horse into an, a little bit of an adrenal state. And I'm going to apply the one rein stop to test the theory that um, while being in a safe environment. So obviously if I get my friend to come and bring a flag or something like that and start waving it and I try and put the one rein stop on and it doesn't work, I'm going to be able to control that situation by saying to my friend, stop with the flag, he's not stopping and then I'm going to be able to bring my horse out of it. Whereas sometimes when you're out in the bush and something happens or out on the beach or something like that, you're not always in control of the situation. You can't always tell the stimulus to stop and, uh, and shut down or turn off or whatever it is that you need it to do. So testing the one rein stop, firstly at the canter, because the canter will stoke your horse into a little bit of an adrenal state. It'll get his heart rate up. It'll get him breathing heavily. And secondly, um, with external stimulus and sort of getting someone else to, I don't want them to spook the horse, but I definitely want them to introduce something that's a little bit worrisome for the horse. So I can, um, I can test my one rein stop and see if it's going to, um, see if it's going to work, see if my horse is going to respond to that one rein stop, um, while he's under that little bit of stress. The second thing that I'm going to do in regards to preparing my horse um, is doing exposure training with my horse. So, so um, exposure training or trust building exercise. So I'm going to go ahead and put a heap of stuff in there. This is what we did today in terms of the cult start that I'm running. So today was trust building day. So we basically went out in the arena with our horses um, and, and we had all different stations set up in the arena. So we had a tarpaulin set up, a ball set up, we had a flag, we had a dryer bone, we had cones, we had jumps, we had, um, uh, what else did we have? maybe spray bottles, we had a mounting block, we had all these different stations set up with obstacles or, or things that we could do to expose our horse to something that he may not have seen before, bunting, anything like that that you can get your hands on. And what that does it is allows us to, again, in a safe controlled environment, it allows us to expose our horse to something that they may not be familiar with, that they may be a little bit worried about, and, and it allows us to take them through 
something that they're a little bit worried about it allows us to bring them out of the other side of something that they're a little bit worried about and therefore it allows us to uh, support our horse and develop our horse's confidence in us and develop their trust in us because we're saying here's something frightening or something that may worry you or something that you don't understand this is how you should deal with it this is how i'm going to help you deal with it and so what our horse does is it starts to go, okay, I've been exposed to 10 scary things and nothing has killed me, nothing has eaten me. So I'm going to go ahead and, and trust you that little bit more. So that's something that they can put in the bank in terms of trusting you. So the more that we can um, cause that situation to happen, the better off we are, especially in a safe controlled environment where again, we can control the stimulus and we can take it up and down as we feel necessary. Um, the third thing that we can do is begin to take our horse for walks online. So, you know, take your horse, you know, float your horse out to the trail, but lead him instead of riding him and just see how he reacts to being in a different area, in a, on a different trail, somewhere that he hasn't been before and, and assess the situation and, and, and determine whether your horse, when he gets worried by something, is he looking at me or is he looking to leave or is he looking to get behind me or is he looking for another horse? What is my horse's go-to when he gets worried? Because that's going to give you a good indication of what your horse is going to do when you get worried out on the trail or when he gets worried out on the trail, what's he going to do? So obviously if I'm leading my horse down a strange trail and he sees something that scares him and if he tries to bolt and leave, that would be a red light to me. I'd be thinking to myself, well, hang on a minute. My horse is trying to leave. I definitely don't want him trying to leave when we're under saddle. So this is something that I need to fix because I need my horse to be looking to me when he's worried, not be looking to leave the area. So, um, it, you know, going on walks online are highly underestimated and it's something that you can do um, probably pretty much wherever you are. Obviously, depending on you know, your neighborhood and whether you live on a busy street and things like that, putting your horse online and just taking them for a walk is a really powerful tool. And it's something that I even do in my paddock. Um, you know, even though my horses live in the paddock and they're living on this 45 acres, if I go and catch one of my horses and take them away from their herd and start leading them around the paddock, their demeanor changes quite rapidly because they no longer have the security of the herd so even if they're on a, quite a large paddock and you think oh well it's their paddock they're not going to be worried they actually do get worried when they're separated from their security which is the herd and they're left to be alone with you so that's a way that you can um create a situation where they've only got you to rely on in a safe way because you're leading them. So leading them around the neighborhood or taking them to a trail and leading them or even simply leading them around the paddock is going to have a, a um, positive effect on, uh, on eventually taking them out on the trail. It's going to build their trust in you. Um, you know, taking him to different showgrounds or taking him to places that you know there's going to be stimulus, so perhaps a local show or a local competition or something like that, uh, that also is going to give you a really good indication of how your horse is going to respond to external stimulus, whether he's going to refer to you or whether he is going to try and get away and just completely ignore you. And if that is the situation, then you need to do more at home to get the horse looking to you for help instead of looking to leave the situation. And that, I feel, is going to keep you a little bit safer in regards to preparing your horse to go out on the trail. Uh, the final thing that I'm going to talk about about preparing your horse to go out on the trail is um, something that I call uh, surprising stimulus. So often on a trail, one of the major things that is going to frighten your horse is typically something that he's not expecting 
and typically it's going to be a movement that he's not expecting so quite often you'll have pheasants or something fly out from under the horse's feet because they're hiding in the bushes and then as you come past them they jump um, often you'll see wallabies uh, here in Australia we see wallabies and they might jump across the path or jump behind you or something like that sometimes you might come across cyclists which obviously cycles um, bicycles are quite quiet and silent so you don't actually know that they're coming up behind you so they can suddenly appear and the other thing that sometimes happens is you might come across walkers and they might have dogs or children or something like that they can be really noisy and and very frantic in their movement and that can startle the horse so i know when i am preparing a horse when i'm going out on the trail is i will go ahead and um I'll go ahead and make sure that I'm riding in my arena and I'll let my dogs come out into the arena with me. Um, I've got a couple of mini foxies, so they love exploring. So they'll go ahead and, you know, they run around the paddock and they look for rats or they they smell things and, and whatever. And then they suddenly appear back in the arena and then they might appear behind the horse or beside the horse and from, or from behind a barrel. And then, you know, they might run after something else, etc., etc. Um, so anything that you can do like that so um, I used to have chickens and chickens were really good as well because chickens will you know they'll appear from nowhere and then all of a sudden they'll flap their wings and make a funny noise and things like that so anything that you can um, control obviously you can't control a chicken very often but um, definitely dogs and things like that that you can hopefully control and say sit or whatever if the horse gets really bothered but basically sensitizing your horse to things popping out from nowhere is a really um, wise investment it's something that can really help when it when it comes to the trail when you may come across other people with dogs or things that might pop up out of the bushes um, unexpectedly and startle your horse if your horse has seen that at home he's a lot less likely to react in regards to um, when he's out on the trail so that would be the final thing that i would do in regards to um you know preparing my horse for going out on the trail when you feel like you've asked yourself all those questions and you've done all those preparations in regards to uh, getting your horse as ready for the trail as you possibly can when it comes time to actually going out on the trail and setting your horse up for success there are a few things that i would expect um or that i would put in place to ensure or to ensure the best way that i possibly can that this is going to be successful for my horse so the the first thing is having a good buddy to go out with now a good buddy is someone that is first and foremost going to understand so this is the human first first and foremost they are going to understand that you are in full control of this ride and if you say that you need to stop or you say that you need to get off or you say that you need to do whatever it is that you do feel like you need to do to help your horse that they are going to support you in that that you haven't done all this preparation called someone who is you know uh, an endurance rider that does 160 k's every month and um and is going to say oh just get on with it just get on that horse and ride and he'll sort it out on the trail um you need to know that you're in control of the trail and you need to pick someone that is going to defer to you and say okay if you need to get off i'm happy with that let's get off and lead the horse or do whatever it, it takes to do that um in regards to your good buddy what you also want to ensure is that they've got a horse that is a good trail riding horse that's been out on trails before that is not going to be reactive that is going to um be a really um confident strong lead horse and that is also not going to cause trouble on the trail so you don't want to go out with two green horses what you want to do is go out with one very solid very experienced trail horse whoever i can't really see the comments but i'm seeing a couple and someone just asked how winnie was uh here she is she's absolutely terrorizing me at the moment and that's why you can see me um, leaning down all the time i keep 
picking her up and dropping her, um, or putting her down on the floor. I'm not dropping her, but she's running around like crazy and uh, and distracting me. Uh, but she hasn't seen me all day, so I am putting up with it. I don't want to lock her out. So the horse that goes out with you needs to be an experienced horse that isn't going to feed the other horse anxiety and isn't going to enter into anxiety if the horse reacts to something. The last thing that you want is your horse to spook at something and then the buddy horse to go, oh, what are you spooking at? You want to hear the horse, that, you want to see the other horse um, say to your horse, I don't know why you're spooking at that. It's fine. I've done this trail a million times, etc., etc. So you want that very quiet, stoic buddy as a human, and you want that very quiet, stoic buddy as a horse as well. Um, the second thing that you want to do is make it a short course. The longer that you're out there, the longer that you're out on that trail, um, potentially the um, the closer you are to having a situation that you can't control or to exposing your horse to something that he may not understand or may not cope with very well. So the first few trails should be a nice, quiet, short trail. Just walk around, you know, maybe 20 minutes, maybe half an hour so you can get back home and or back to the trailer or whatever it is that you're doing and the horse can feel like, oh, wow, I did that trail, nothing happened to me. I'm, I'm fine, we're all good. The last thing that you want to do is take your horse on a six-hour trail and have him for five hours thinking to himself, is this it? Are we ever going home again? I don't understand what we're doing or where we are, etc., etc." So nice short courses to start with and um, setting your horse up for success in terms of his fatigue management, his confidence management and all that sort of stuff. Um, the final thing that I would recommend that you do is set yourself up for success by picking a good day to go out on a trail. So not if you're going to go to a public area, don't go on the weekends when there's going to be lots of users out on that trail, push bikes and motorbikes and other horse riders and things like that. Go ahead and set yourself time on a weekday when it's going to be as quiet as possible. Make sure it's not school holidays for those of you who aren't aware of school holidays like me, with you know who, who don't have kids at home that are um, young and, and have school holidays and things like that. The worst thing is when you, you, know, you pack up and you go to the beach on a Monday thinking that it's going to be fine and it ends up being a pupil free day or it ends up being a school holidays or something like that. And, uh, you know, there's a there's hundred people down at the beach and you think, well, this isn't the best situation for me and my horse. So um, picking a really good day and, um, you know, picking a really good time of day as well, uh, where there's, there's going to be low traffic in the area and picking a, a trail that's probably not a really publicly used trail. Uh, so they're the things that I would recommend in setting you and your horse up for success in the trail. And uh, I hope that you got a lot out of it. And, um, and you are able to set you and your horse up for success going out into, on the trail or in public areas. Uh, it's such an enjoyable thing to do. I will go through all the comments when I am finished. I can't, um, I can't read them all now. The camera's a little bit too far away from me and I can't see them um, properly. So thank you so much for commenting and watching and joining in. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to send your, your um, topics in. You can remain anonymous if you wish to. Just go ahead and send me a private message and say, Tanya, can you talk about this? I'm always after topics for articles, for newsletters, for Monday Night Lives. So don't be afraid to send me any topic. I will be able to use it somewhere along the line. And uh, I really appreciate your, um, your input in, in regards to these lives because obviously they are for you guys. So I hope everyone is having a fantastic week with their horses. We're just at the start of a 14-day cult start, so it's really, really exciting. We're just getting all settled in. And, uh, and we've got then um, an extreme trail, three-day course on an extreme trail, which is on a private property um, in the Grafton area. And then after that, in August, we've got the big 10-day clinic happening in August, which is just a massive experience. So those of you who are interested, go ahead and send a message in regards to the 10-day. We've already got um, registrations coming in. So it's very exciting. Um, it's going to be a real corker of a clinic. I can... Um, I'm, I'm starting to plan the curriculum now and I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope you're all having a fantastic week with your horses. 
Thank you so much for joining and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Good night.